Welcome back to Wake Up America Weekend. Now, Seattle is the latest blue city mm. to see an uptick in crime as they record the 50th homicide of the year. This is on pace for a record high. Now, concerned citizens calling the city a no-rules playground. This as the Asian community has grown fearful of recent violent robberies that seem to be targeting elderly Asian residents. Absolutely awful. But joining us now to discuss are two Seattle experts, senior fellow and journalist at Discovery Institute, Jonathan Cho, and retired Seattle Police Lieutenant Jessica Taylor. I want to uh, just say thank you so much for joining us. We understand you're the experts on what's going on in Seattle. Um, Jessica, I'm going to start right in with you. If Seattle Police Officers Guild estimates that the department lost approximately 600 officers in the last three years... What's the reaction to Seattle on, on a track now with a record high of homicides? So we have police officers going down, homicides going up. You know, is there a correlation here that there's not enough officers on the street or is it just everything combined? Well, certainly not having enough officers to do the job is going to affect the crime level. I mean, we're reactionary at this point. We're not proactive at all. Can't be. Yeah, that's a good point. And, uh, Jonathan, um, there have been 14 violent robberies since June, and that 13 of the robberies had victims uh, who were elderly Asian residents, which is just horrifying. The police aren't considering this to be hate crimes, but the community is still scared. I mean, I don't understand how you couldn't see that there might be a correlation with hate crimes there, but um, what's going on? Can you explain it? Yeah, that's something the uh, Asian-American community, especially in South Seattle, is also trying to figure out. The complaint right now is that they haven't been notified up until recently of this string of crimes targeting Asian-Americans, as you said, especially the elderly. Um, and again, uh, getting back to the fact that these, this city is down officers, there's concern right now that the bad guys, the criminals, know this and feel emboldened and will continue to go after these vulnerable communities, especially Asian Americans, because there's a stereotype out there that Asian Americans won't speak up and report these crimes, that they also carry lots of cash, and again, that uh, they have a language barrier as well and may not communicate all this. So it's this, you know, disastrous recipe right now, lack of officers, a community that is afraid and doesn't speak up, and again, criminals taking advantage of this. Yeah, and I, I just want to say, as a retired agent, what, I, what I'm seeing, and I'm not saying that, that there's no hate crime happening here, but I think what's, what really is happening is all the things that Jonathan just said. So elderly, so easily targets can't fight back. And with the Asians, some of them are reticent to go to the police to report these things. So again, a benefit to the criminal here. So I think it's about targets of opportunity, making it easy for them. But we'll, we'll obviously more will be played out on that. But Lieutenant, I want to go to you for a second. A homeless encampment has returned less than two weeks after being cleared with outreach workers attempting to connect with the people living there. This came after a double shooting was reported from the encampment just in mid-June. So what can be done about these, the homelessness issue? Well, I tell you, I've been working um, for years, even on my own personal time with the homeless population. I go in, I was going into these camps all the time to get to the root of the problem. And this problem can be solved with the right leadership and a plan. Yeah. And we don't have that in Seattle anywhere. What do you recommend? Not that from the be? mayor, not from the governor, not from the chief of police. We'll clean it up for the baseball games. But, <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah. Um, but you know, after that, it just comes right back. Yeah. Jonathan, I want to come to you again. Um, because you've been involved in the search for a missing homeless woman in Seattle, and uh, you found her yesterday, and you've said that her assault um, was a blessing in disguise uh, for you. Can you talk to us about why that was a blessing and how concerning the issue is of homelessness in Seattle has become? Yeah, I think Jessica hit it on the head as well. It's really turned into a whack-a-mole situation where homeless encampments are simply just being cleared, and again, the homeless knowing that you know, they'll have some time to set up shop again, we'll come right back, and it just turns into this vicious cycle. As regards to this miraculous situation, Saturday evening, uh, the family of Kaylee Gordon, a homeless woman I interviewed more than a year ago, 
this family spotted her in my video, didn't even realize she was on the streets of Seattle, addicted to drugs and struggling with mental illness. The, the root causes of all of this um, it started this uh, incredible search, and we found her through all of our contacts. But as you mentioned, uh, the police, when they showed up, said to us point blank, hey, you know we can't just bring somebody in for no reason. And then we had to bring up the fact that she assaulted us when we tried to help her as the reason being... Uh, uh, the reason and the justification for bringing her into the hospital. So thankfully, the police agreed and, and noticed some of the evidence of that. And now she's in the hospital. So we hope that she gets the help and treatment. But there are so many other cases like this where, you know, incidents uh, have happened where homeless are on the streets and the police and officials can't do anything about it because the homeless choose not to leave. Yeah, I'll tell you, that's, an, that's a harrowing story. Uh, great work yeah. on your part there. Incredible. And really, journalism. really well done. So, Jonathan, show excellent work. And Lieutenant Jessica Taylor, thank you so much for your insight as well. We appreciate you being on. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, I mean, Absolutely. what a story, right? I mean, uh, that yeah. someone saw her in the video and they were able to get her. Hopefully, she's going to get the help that she needs now. We do hope that she can. And, and anyone else that's in those positions Absolutely. out on the street, not seeking the mental health uh, issues that they have. Um,